So I think given that I came from a very small village in the southeast can of England, orphaned, not left a penny, even when my dad died, he didn't get married, but I had a stepmom who I wasn't particularly close to, but everything that he had, which wasn't much, went to her. So I literally came to the States with, I think, 250 bucks or something. So one of the things that I did see is the extremes of abundance and what that affords you in terms of what becomes available and possible, right? Like, so my, after my first interview, I was flown the very next morning to New York because the wife was filming there. And the way that things were handled was so exquisite, which I appreciate because I always prided myself on my organization. I'm a Virgo, so I have many of those stereotypical characteristics of order and efficiency. So by the time I'd had the interview at Sony, I got home within 25 minutes. There was, showing my age, a fax, you know, <laughs> with my flight itinerary, what time the car was picking me up. I got to the hotel on the hotel bed. There was per diem money laid out. There was an invitation to a show that night. And so I knew I was in the right place because that's how I like to live life. Now, do I do it 100% of the time? No, of course, I'm going to have my lazy days. But so that was one thing that I really garnered to another level of impeccability, integrity, efficiency, discipline. And particularly the man, you know, we could argue that he didn't have to prove himself by virtue of his status in the world. And yet his level of dedication was incredible. I mean, both of them, but that was really inspiring to me is that even when you've made it, don't let rest on your laurels, don't take things for granted. And so that inspired me to keep becoming the best. And that's why I became a yoga teacher. I became a Pilates instructor, which they loved, right? Because it gave them even more faculties to play with as we sort of refine their vitality in their bodies. So I just wanted to keep becoming, quote unquote, the best version of me. So that much of that is uh, off the coattails of his and her dedication. I can also remember one day, which was very profound. I was in Sydney just at the turn of the millennium, and I was getting paid a decent amount because of who they were, and certainly more than I was making as a trainer, and definitely way more than I had before that working in a bar in the Santa Monica Pier. <laughs> <laughs> but because of the nature of the job, I couldn't really spend the money, right? I had my apartment taken care of. I had a car. I had a phone. I had all my bills were managed. It would just be anecdotal if I wanted to get food here and there. So I managed to put a bit of money away in the stock market, got some good tips. And that was back in the time where you could pick any kind of digital stock and you look like a professional day trader. And so I can remember one morning, I'm 29 and my portfolio just ticks over a million bucks. And I probably started with 200 something grand that I'd save really hard to make. So I would 5x in about a year or so. And as I sat there, I'd also received three boxes from Oakley, big boxes, maybe four. And within those boxes was everything from about 40 pairs of sunglasses and a couple of dozen pairs of shoes and a bunch of clothes, because that was part of what I did was help sponsor or they sponsored me, got stuff on these celebrities to wear and blah, blah, blah. And as I sat there, I was like, so grateful that here I was with a, an apartment that overlooked Sydney Harbor. I could see the opera house, the bridge. I just got a million bucks in my stock market account and I got all this free goodies and not just anything, but free, real, really good shit. <laughs> and then I laughed and I said, that's nothing compared to what's happening across the street at their house. <laughs> you know? And so it was the beauty of perspective that I'm getting free sunglasses, most of which were for them anyway. They're getting free cars and whatever. Like it was just a whole, there's different levels. Like there's that song, there's levels to this shit. And it was also super humbling because within, I think about six months of that, I lost everything, right? Because the stock market crashed. I didn't know what I was doing. I just picked some fortunate stocks that happened at, I think one of them 20 X or something. And then I went back to just sort of the traditional, do the right thing, work hard and rely on my talents and, and my dedication to being a caring human being who's making a difference. So. So there was a lot that transpired in that where I learned, as I said, the dedication, the discipline. I got a glimpse of abundance for myself that then also went, which then really pulled from my deeper resources of not giving up and not being a victim of life again and picking up from scratch. And 
yeah, so there was so much to be grateful. And also I'd say the degree to which he particularly, again, really sought counsel from people who were the best at what they did. In lay terms, not being scared to ask for help, right? Because having been orphaned, I became, at no shock, a bit of a lone wolf. And I, like you, birthdays didn't matter. I don't know how many Christmases I've spent by myself because that's what I became accustomed to. And I figured a lot of things out. I became incredibly smart, resourceful, and studied a lot. But it was beautiful to see that he wasn't scared to ask for help, which I think particularly for a man is a bit of a rite of passage to overcome that. And the quintessential example being directions in a car, although I guess men are off the hook from that one because you will have your phone now. <laughs> So that there was a lot that I garnered from that. And then with regards to the second part of your question of what I wouldn't want to take from it, I don't know. I dabbled with the whole idea of fame and how intrusive it is. I think how scary it can be for some people, uh, especially they had kids. And that was something that I kind of in a funny way knew that I was my own version of them without being conceited. I wanted to be humble, but knew that I had a gift. and sort of reconciled that, you know, and I felt there's a different form of fame, right? There's fame that is untouchable and there's fame that's relatable. And I really wanted to lean into the latter. And I think that's where in a very, very, very small way, wherever I go, I seem to be stopped and people come up to me with an immense amount of gratitude and tears often in their eyes for the difference that my work makes. And I feel confident that I'm, if there is any, I don't even like the word fame, but some sort of notoriety, people have heard of my work that it's relatable, that I'm human and that I don't see myself as being better than anyone. So I'm glad. And I don't think that was their intention was to be better than anyone, but it's just the nature of being in Hollywood and people put you on a pedestal. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day. So make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really going to love this one as well. And if you ever want to see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.